Assalamu alaikum beautiful students this video lecture is titled the mosquito by dh lawrence and it is meant for the students of 11th standard components of the lecture are here Life of D.H. Lawrence, title of the poem, text of the poem, structure of the poem, paraphrase of the poem, theme of the poem, literary devices, glossary, textual questions. Life of D.H. Lawrence. D.H. Lawrence uh, was born in 1895 and died in 1930. He was a novelist, poet, playwright, essayist, critic, painter. He was born in England. He was the fourth child of his parents. His dad was a coal miner and his mom had been a school teacher. He studied at a local school and became a clerk in 1901. He taught at a school from 1902 to 1906. In 1907, he joined a college to get a degree. In 1908, he moved to London to teach at a school. During this period, a lady, Jesse Chambers, was his close friend and helper she was also you can say his girlfriend in modern language he began to write uh, he began to write books however he would often suffer from pneumonia so this man uh, you can say his favorite illness was this pneumonia. In 1912, he eloped with a woman, uh, Frida Weekly, a wife of his former professor. Well, people do these things. Some people, not all. When they're young, along with her three kids, wandered country to country and finally married her in 1914. He was also a homosexual and William Henry Hawking was his boyfriend. I don't know when people become very famous or very rich why do they turn into homosexuals well this is a mystery uh, maybe we can unsolve this mystery in future now dh lawrence he wrote on sexuality emotional health instinct etc he was against democracy and favored dictatorship his notable books are sons and lovers the Rambo, Women in Love, Lady Chatterley's Lover, Birds, Beasts and uh, Flowers. He died in 1930 and was cremated, means burned. M. Forrester uh, calls him the greatest imaginative novelist of our generation. So we are going to read this man's poem, The Mosquito. Mosquito, mosquito. Yes, title of the poem. Mosquito is a flying insect that is mostly seen in summer days. The research has shown that male mosquitoes do not bite humans or animals. Well, we males, we are gentle in every species. We don't hurt anybody. The research has shown that male mosquitoes do not bite humans or animals. However, it is female mosquitoes that bite humans because they need blood to produce eggs. The title is appropriate for the poem which explains in detail in a stinct wits and skulls of the mosquito. Text of the poem. Well, this uh, poem is very, very long and uh, the students and teachers fail to understand equally fail to understand uh, it properly because of its uh, diction and these conflicting views of the poet uh, about the mosquito because in certain lines the mosquito is being glorified and yet in other lines the mosquito is uh, you can say belittled ridiculed and mocked by the poet so uh, normal teachers 
or you can say these general students they fail to understand the crux of this poem the essence of this poem the main purpose of this poem well i will try my level best to, to make you people understand uh, this poem in the uh, you can say shortest time possible because you know we people we are from kashmir and uh, we don't avail here of 4g uh, this uh, mobile data service understand it is uh, july 2020 and yet we, i don't know why uh, indians this indian government has banned 4g uh, this data service for our valley it is very unfortunate so you know uh, i upload these videos on youtube and it is very difficult uh, to do it uh, with the 2g mobile uh, data service now coming back to our topic the mosquito by dh lawrence now this the starting the opening of this poem is uh, you can say very awakening uh, it's surprising and it shakes you up this when did you set out your tricks monsieur now in the very line of this poem you see the irony the poet seems uh, to be praising to be complimenting glorifying the mosquito but you uh, have to as uh, accept this fact uh, that the poet is not meaning what he is saying in this line he is actually making fun of the mosquito by referring to him as monsieur monsieur is a french word it means mr in english language when did you set out your tricks monsieur now you call us trick say monsieur mr or you can say the mr mosquito mr mosquito when did you set out your tricks i know sen these these tricks to this this bad policy or you can say this cheating understand or you can say smuggling of blood you know when did you start it you know what was your age then were you 10 months old 5 months old or was it in your instinct as i told you people already uh, when we were discussing the life of the poet that dh lorness was engrossed in more interested in knowing the nature of things nature of animals nature of human beings or you can say instinct of human beings that that basic uh, impulse of human beings so you know that a snake it is in the instinct in the nature of a snake uh, to bite human beings likewise it is in the instinct in the nature of the mosquito female mosquito to harm human beings when did you start your tricks monsieur so ironic statement actually making fun of this mosquito so when did you start this cheating hurting people what do you sit hand on such high legs for was why this length up shadid shank you exaltation you can see the bitter sarcasm here or you can say dark irony here uh, you can imagine the poet's heart is full with rage with anger with fire for the mosquito but his language apparently seems very sweet very beautiful understand but a, you can say veteran reader a good reader of uh, european poetry english poetry will tell you that the poet really doesn't mean what he says what do you sit in on such high legs for high legs for again ironic statement so you know mosquito is a very small flying insect understand in comparison with his body uh, it does have long legs understand the poet questions here and he does not only ask us one question he questions after question is the mosquito that why are you standing i say on your high legs 
understand ironically on your high legs why this length of shredded shank shredded shank here means thin legs well uh, people nowadays they join gym centers to make their legs and thighs look puffy look padder because it is considered a sign of beauty but if your legs are really thin it is a sign of ugliness so again here that the poet asks the mosquito that your legs are thin you know, mocking him ridiculing him you exaltation now exaltation here can mean uh, someone who is at the helm of affairs someone who holds some power and the mosquito you know is according to the poet an insignificant insect a very cheap and mean insect a worthless insect it doesn't have any value any existence at all but yet the poet calls the mosquito exaltation ironically ironically calls him exaltation you can see irony here you exaltation is you the one who seems or who claims to have power understand or you the one who rarely or hardly uh places it is speed on the ground you are always in air above our heads understand you you are very proud of yourself of your power understand you have mistakenly uh, accepted that you are holding some power over humans so you can see irony here next it says is it so that you shall lift your center of gravity upward and weigh no more than air as you alight upon me stand upon me weightless you phantom i heard a woman call you the winged victory in sluggish venice you turn your head towards your tail and smile now is it so that you shall lift your center of gravity of the center of gravity well it is a scientific term they say everything has a center of gravity or you can say a point at which the weight of an object seems to be acting understand if you have a long pole maybe 20 meter pole understand and its weight may be uh, 500 kg you cannot lift it understand you can't lift it if you hold it in the middle but if you go to the one end of that pole you can lift it a bit uh, from the ground Under understand so if you really want to see the weight of a thing you have to catch that thing you have to get hold of that thing at its center of gravity as it is midpoint understand but here when he says is it so that you shall lift your center of gravity of force so center of gravity of force he the poet actually means uh, that his body poet is uh, this uh, mosquito's body understand you are flying in the air you are taking uh, your body uh, into the air and weigh no more than air as you alight upon me weigh no more than air now these words are here very simple uh, that mus a mosquito can't be even half a gram understand it is uh weight is very very you can say less or rather unimaginable imponderable and that is to say and weigh no more than air means you are as you have as much weight as the air has and you know we uh, do not feel the weight of the air means the poet means that the mosquito doesn't have any weight at all and he alights upon me and he uh, comes and sits upon me and i can't feel uh, you can say its weight because the mosquito is weightless stand upon me weightless and standing the mosquito standing upon the poet upon the speaker weightless you phantom and then the poet here he gets a bit angry he uses bad language understand and he descends down to name calling and 
द वाइट कॉल इज द मस्कीटो फैंटम यू आर अ सपरेट है ना देर आर एंजल्स देर आर ह्यूमन्स एंड देर आर सपरेट्स अंडरस्टैंड वाट यू कॉल दोज सोल्स सपरेट फैंटम्स यू विल सपरेट्स अंडरस्टैंड सो फैंटम्स अकॉर्डिंग टू द पीपल सपरेट्स आर इन आर अबिक वी से जिन अंडरस्टैंड दे एग्जिस्ट बट वी कॉन्ट सी दम वी कॉन्ट फील देर प्रजेंस लाइक वाइज हेर द मस्कीटो एग्जिस्ट बट द पॉइट कैन नॉट फील इट्स वेट कैन नॉट फील इट्स प्रजेंस दिस मस्कीटो स्टील विली एंड सीक्रेटली सिट्स ऑन द पॉइट एंड अटैक्स हिम स्टैंड अपॉन मी वेट लेस यू फैंटम आई हर्ड अ वुमन कॉल यू द विंगड विक्ट्री नो वट विंगड विक्ट्री विंगड विक्ट्री इज एक्चुअली द नेम ऑफ अ स्टैचू एंड दैट स्टैचू इज एक्चुअली डेडिकेटेड टू हेब्रू गॉडस नेमड नाइकी है ना यू से दीज डेज ब्रांड्स इसराइली ब्रांड्स वन ऑफ दैम इज नाइकी सो विंगड विक्ट्री इज अ स्टैचू dedicated to the goddess nike now if you call a person god or goddess or legend or hero it seems uh on the space that they are comp uh, they are you can say uh you can say a compliment it, it, it is a compliment but you know the poet is here using ironic language i heard a woman call you the winged victory in sluggish venice venice is a place a country a european country sluggish means lazy means some woman has called you uh you can say or compared you with the goddess nike with the powerful goddess nike in sluggish venice understand maybe uh, this mosquito uh actually there is uh, some other writer has written uh you can say Uh, a topic maybe a poem or you can say an essay on the mosquito and the poet is here alluding referring to that uh, you can say that poem or that piece of writing well i really don't know why the name venice has been uh, used here either exactly some woman has uh, compared the mosquito to winged victory to the goddess uh nike or the poet is referring to some book or to some uh, you can say essay to some poem that the poet knows and we don't know but in short he means to say that women call you women praise you understand men like the speaker himself uh, they don't have a good opinion a very you can say stimulated opinion uh, about the mosquito you turn your head toward your tail and smile it's natural when somebody is praised when you are praised and i am praised we feel flattered we smile we feel happy so same is the case with the mosquito when the mosquito is compared with the goddess uh, nike he smiles how can you put so much a uh, devilry into that translucent phantom shred of a frail corpus but the poet here wonders he is a bit confused that how can a small insect like the mosquito be so dangerously devilish in a small mosquito we can't even see it it, it is weight is not even half a gram it is very small very small insect but yet it gives a lot of trouble to human beings and here in the poem to the uh speaker so the speaker here wonders that how can uh, a small mosquito having frail corpus having frail corpus having wheel uh, this weak body having uh, almost no existence uh, can be so much devilish so much wicked and then he says cure with your thin wings and your streaming legs how you sail like a heron or a dull cloud of air now here uh you can say the bitterness of the language is uh, you can say go, goes down to some extent the poet is here impressed the poet is here accepting uh the power 
the you can see here uh, the the power the talent is the merit of the mosquito when he says cure and it is strange with your thin thin wings the mosquito has thin legs thin wings and your streaming legs streaming legs means your flowing legs you know? if you, you uh, get a chance to observe a mosquito uh, to observe a mosquito uh, flying you know, when the mosquito is uh, flying it seems the mosquito mosquitoes legs the legs of the mosquito are flowing in the air it doesn't have uh, very much strength to hold its legs close to its body while flying that is why streaming legs legs which you cannot keep close to your body because you are very weak understand when you are uh, flying with your thin wings and your streaming legs and then he says uh, how you sail like a heron heron is a song but a very beautiful word it flies very high and uh, we can we humans can sometimes hear this bird singing we can hear a song but we can't see with our naked eyes uh, this bird because it flies very high and it sings very beautifully now here first time uh, the poet is feeling impressed or we feel the poet is here accepting uh, the merit of the mosquito the beauty of the mosquito or you can say the good points in the mosquito because the mosquito is here compared with heron a song word understand or a dull clot of air dull clot of air but very soon the poet is again making fun of ridiculing the mosquito calling mosquito dull clot of air and now we have clots in blood understand those small lumps of blood dull clots of blood but here the mosquito refer the, the poet refers to the mosquito as clot of air you are nothing just you can say uh, a clot of air understand a clot of air a tiny piece of air a nothingness now see he again the poet again grows you can say here uh, uh, angry he says you are nothingness you you are just nothingness and, um, you, the what do you call that literary device underestimate uh, underestimate uh, that uh, one is hyperbole when you exaggerate things and sec second is that understatement understatement the poet has used it here understatement when he calls the mosquito as a nothingness yet what an aura surrounds you you are every little aura prowling and casting a numbness on my mind that is your trick you are a bit of filthy magic but he says see you are the poet uh, addresses the mosquito as nothingness mosquito you are a nothingness you do not even exist understand you are very insignificant you don't have any personality at all but despite that understand what an aura surrounds you you are very proud aura here means having that air of superiority that you are very superior you understand uh, what they say uh, that, that you walk uh, with attitude you pray with attitude you talk with attitude we call them that this man has a great attitude he has you can say a, a proud aura likewise the mosquito is uh, asked here rather told here yet what an aura surround you are very small but you are aura understand but you are aura your attitude is too big it's a proud attitude you are evil little aura you know, when it comes to the size and shape of your body you are the, the size of your body is very small and so is the uh, you can say aura you, know, you, you get here say you can confuse it you get here confused to the point refers to the mosquito here I uh, say as nothingness then he says yet what an aura surrounds you means yet you are you have a private attitude 
then again says no you are very small your attitude is also very small understand the point is confused here because when you are in frustration when you are in desperation when you are in trouble you don't know what you are saying that is what we get here the point is not really in his senses because he has been tortured he has been torment tormented he has been annoyed to a great extent by the mosquito and says you are prowling uh, walking carefully or flying carefully and casting a numbness on my mind and you are here casting a numbness means distracting me casting a numbness on my mind can mean here uh, numbness means here being uh, unconscious understand but casting a numbness on my mind if you take it as a phrase it means that the small mosquito succeeds in distracting the speaker here he he here mesmerizes the speaker understand he here uh, you can see outwits the speaker that is your trick you bit up pill magic and the speaker accept is it yes yes i am being distracted by you you are making me unconscious you are in a way defeating me outwitting me excelling me in policy because you are because it is your bad policy because you are a cheater you cheat you don't come openly you don't uh, uh, you don't give me uh, any any warning before attacking me understand and then he says you are bit of filthy magic he says it's a kind of magic but it's filthy magic dirty magic invisibility and the anesthetic power the two weapons that the mosquitoes employing is invisible number one it is hardly seen in the air and the anesthetic power anesthetic power is the power of benumbing the speaker the power of making the speaker making the point unconscious or distracted or unmindful or in attentive and then he says to deaden my attention in your direction to deaden my attention to kill my attention in your direction means you are using your magic and whatever you have and you succeed in making me in attentive you succeed in making me distracted you succeed in making me a kind of you can say be numbered and then you do your job then you come and suck my blood then he said but i know you are game now citrici sorcerer cure how you stalk and prowl the air in circles and evasions and enveloping me cowl on wings winged victory now again he, the poet here gets us angry he says now now uh, your game is over because i know uh, now you are tricks i have now understood you understand you are a citrici sorcerer means again you are a very very skillful magician but i know now you are game i know now you are sickless now here the poet he is accepting uh, the you can say the the intelligence the cleverness of the mosquito but at the same time he is he is rejecting it because the poet the speaker uh, is too arrogant he is not ready to accept the um the talent the intelligence or you can say uh the power that this small mosquito has he is underestimating the mosquito and we in our life we don't have to underestimate our enemies no matter how small they seem how weak they seem and the point is making here the mistake of underestimating his enemy in circles and evasions and we love means you have, you are very trained you seem very trained when i mm, try to kill you attack you 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 avoid uh, say uh, what do you say in circles and evasions you you avoid my attacks you evade my attacks you dodge my attacks you save yourself and you loping me by and uh, circumambulating me by uh moving around me understand now here you can imagine understand or oh, when a man tries to kill a mosquito attack a mosquito 
understand so sometimes mosquito is behind you your head sometimes in front of your head sometimes far away sometimes uh, very close to you on your back so it really makes your life hell or in modern language it pisses you off Gaul on wings, winged victory says you are actually a gaul, a phantom, a spirit. You are not a mosquito. You are some magical uh, being, some some spirit, some ghost. You are a winged victory. You are really a winged victory. You are really uh, like that goddess Nike. Settle and stand on long thin shanks. Shanks means your legs. Eyeing me means seeing me sideways and cunningly conscious that I am aware. You speck. Understand here, uh, the speaker gives some credit to the mosquito. That mosquito is acting, behaving like a very well-trained spy, well-trained detective. He doesn't come all of a sudden without carelessly, without thinking to attack the po attack the point, attack the speaker. The mosquito seems to be well-trained. He knows when to attack. Understand? He is eyeing means he is first observing its victim. Understand? And when he feels the victim is unaware, the victim is inattentive, then he attacks. Very, very careful uh, detective. And then he says, you speck again. A nothingness, then uh, uh, you, you speck, you are very small. Uh, like an atom, like a jot, uh, like a tittle. I hate the way you lurch up sideways into air, having read my thoughts against you. Now you can hear, see the level of desperation of the poet. When some small thing gives a big trouble to a big human being, and the big human being is helpless, he is not uh, succeeding in achieving his aim. Understand? He is not succeed. Succeed. He is not succeeding in. Uh, the poet is not succeeding in killing the mosquito. The poet grows impatient. And you can see that impatience here in these lines. He says, I hate the way you lurch off. Now, when I try to kill you, when I try to attack you, and you lurch off, you, uh, you dodge, you evade my attacks. And I hate it. Understand? And then he says, uh, having read my thoughts, I get, it seems that you are reading my mind. And you are uh, you are a mind reader. You know um, that the poet is going to kill you, and you run away. You lurch off, you dodge, and see who wins in this game, sly game, a bluff, man or mosquito. Now the man is the 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 man, the poet, or you can see the speaker is challenging the mosquito. Now see, there is a kind of you can say game of bluff, a war of deception. Or in modern uh, terminology, you can say a cold war. There is a cold war going on between the speaker and the mosquito. Because the speaker wants to kill the mosquito, but he can't. The mosquito remains invisible. The mosquito doesn't come face to face. Likewise, this mosquito, when he feels that the poet is, that the speaker is unaware, inattentive, then he attacks. Even mosquito doesn't have guts to come uh to face to face with the uh, speaker and attack it so it is a game of bluff silly game a secret war a secret war of deception understand and the poet is accepting it and he says man i'm now there is a war between the man and the mosquito understand now let us see who uh, defeats uh whom in this war of uh bluff in this war of you can say deception in this cold war now you don't know that i exist and i don't know that you exist now then it is your trump it is your hateful little trump you pointed fiend you pointed fiend now again this is you don't you don't know that i exist and i don't know that you exist now sir you don't know that i exist the poet exists understand so it means what that means you actually uh, the the poet is too proud to accept the existence of the mosquito understand and at the same time the poet feels that the mosquito is too small to acknowledge 
uh, the existence of the poet and again underestimating the mosquito and then he said it is about trump well trump is here you can say a new word you, you may not see this word in i uh, say a dictionary and it uh, give us a lot of trouble to teachers what actually Trump means. But it is not that Donald Trump, the president of America. Trump, this word Trump is here, uh, you can say it short form or you can say a new word formed out of the already existing English word trumpet. And by Trump or by trumpet, the poet is referring to the mouth of the mosquito. Because trumpet it gives noise, it gives sound, and this mosquito, this mosquito is also he's making a lot of noise with his trumpet, with his long mouth. That is what he says. You are pointed, you pointed, fiend. The fiend is here, devil. The poet calls the mosquito pointed fiend. Understand? Long mouth, the devil, trumpeted devil. The insect that. Uh, has a trumpet instead of a mouth name calling making fun of the mosquito ridiculing the mosquito and they say if it shakes my uh, blood to hit it of you please I hate your trumpet I hate your long this pointed mouth understand it sh it boils my blood I just want to annihilate you destroy you crush you down see the desperation of the poet it is your small high hateful buggle in my ear and he says with this trumpet with this pointed uh, mouth you make noise you make uh, this hateful noise and that noise is irritating me annoying me buggle has to mean buggle means noise and buggle is also a musical instrument but here it has been used as a nice hateful buggle why do you do it understand here is the uh, these lines why do you do it surely it is a bad policy they say you can't help it these three lines actually tell us uh, the uh, you can say temperament the disposition of the of dh lawrence because i told you that dh lawrence he mainly writes on sexuality emotions understand he writes also on uh, nature nature of insects animals human beings or you can say instincts that is what he uh, wants to convey to us that is what he wants to drive home to us that this mosquito is evil is wicked it annoys us it tortures us it uh, gives us troubles but the mosquito in itself is not responsible for it it is the instinct of mosquito it is the nature of mosquito that is what he said why do you do it why do you trouble a human being why do you suck the blood of human beings surely it is a bad policy yes, well i accept you accept it is a bad policy it is not a good thing to do it is a bad rule bad principle they say you can't help but they say the people say the mosquito can't help it the mosquito can't avoid it because sucking the blood of human beings and animals torturing human beings and animals is in the nature is in the very nature and instinct of human beings so you know nature can't be changed instincts can't be changed so you don't have to blame mosquito you have to blame the creation of mosquito you have to blame the very essence of mosquito or the nature of mosquito instinct of mosquito understand that is what he says you have to understand the mosquito you don't have to blame the mosquito. Mosquito is something to be understood. Mosquito is not something to be blamed, to be denigrated, to be, uh, you can say, condemned. No, nothing like that. Because it is just nature. Mosquito is nature. Understand? For example, if a normal human being slaps you, you, you may slap that normal human being back. You may get angry. You may lodge an fire against him. But if a madman slaps you, you know he is a madman. Understand? You don't slap that mad man back because you know it is not that mad man it is actually his mental condition his ment his you can say his ill health he's suffering from an illness and you understand that uh madman you don't condemn him you don't uh you can say blame him 
because you understand that madman that he's not normal that is why he's doing it likewise mosquito you don't have to blame the mosquito because mosquito mosquito is not doing it deliberately it is in its nature and that is the real message real theme of this point but they say if that is so then i believe a little in providence protecting the innocent well we say well when sometimes we feel weak we invoke god we call oh god now save us we are weak uh in the face of this power in this situation so god will protect us i'm a victim i'm an innocent the poet uh plead is a victim now the poet uh, the poet plead is uh you can see innocent now they say god i'm innocent please save me from the mosquito <laughs> understand again uh, one more thing is here that you uh the poet is trying to reveal the the poet is trying to highlight the power of nature mosquito is a mosquito is here representing uh the nature understand we human beings no matter how advanced we are no matter uh how much advanced we are in science and technology how much we people have read and progressed still we are helpless at the hands of nature that is another thing from this point and then you have but it sounds so amazingly like a slogan a yell of triumph as you snatch my scalp now while the poet was here trying to come to terms with the mosquito trying to understand the nature of mosquito i mean she got distracted meanwhile the mosquito has done its job it has attacked the poet and it has uh sucked uh the it has sucked the blood of the mosquito that is why it says but it sounds so amazingly like a slogan so once mosquito is done with sucking the blood of the poet it runs away it flies away with the slogan means with singing understand with making that humming a yell of triumph has you snatched my scalp scalp means here head the this time the mosquito attacked the head of the poet blood red blood super magical now here the poet is getting really really horrified terrified oh my god the mosquito has sucked my blood my red blood super magical and it has it is a really wonderful job the small mosquito understand it didn't let me know it didn't let me feel uh, when it was sucking my blood it is a miracle um, it, it is super magical it is something really magical that a small mosquito succeeded in sucking the blood of a big human being of the speaker forbidden liquor well forbidden liquor it refers to her blood i behold you stand for a second and space made in oblivion and then he says now i am watching you mr mosquito i am watching you you sucked my blood now you are sitting somewhere now you are also in a tent you are also unmindful understand and space made in oblivion means here forgetful now the mosquito he is here uh, you can say feeling relieved that it did it it is job now nothing is going to happen to it now third message from the poem is here that see the mosquito is also underestimating uh, the powers of the poet understand once we do something uh, maybe we may hurt a person we may attack a person and then we don't have to uh, sit relaxed and relieved we have to always uh, be alert understand we have to always be alert because you have done some kind of wrong to somebody and then be alert because there will be always consequences but here the mosquito he is in oblivion he is forgetting for a time being uh, the consequences of his you can say trespassing of his uh, you can say doing this bad thing uh, and sucking the blood of the poet then he says sucking live blood my blood such silence such suspended on spot he says you uh, here sucked my blood the poet is blood and you did it suspended transport here and you did it you can say silently quietly such a gouging but he says it is disgusting it is disgusting to suck somebody's blood it is not a worthy uh, thing to do and then he says you stagger as well as you may now the mosquito is here done a mistake 
perhaps it has sucked more blood than it could carry that is why it is not able to fly properly it is staggering understand staggering means not being able to walk properly but here in this case to fly properly only your accursed hairy frailty your own imponderable weightlessness saves you wafts you away on the very draft my anger makes in it is snatching and then he says well this uh, uh, this weakness this uh, small size of your body this frailty this weakness is not your uh, weakness in the real sense of the world rather it is uh, your strength because when i try to attack you when i try to kill you this weightlessness helps you to save yourself from me understand that because this weight it is imponderable i can't even imagine your weightlessness you don't have any weight at all and then he says wafts you away uh, on the very draft my anger when, when i get angry and i try to kill you i try to hit you with my hand and and I, the, the waves that are created uh, with the you can say uh, uh, when uh, I don't get a good word here. Walked is away on the very drop. When I try to hit you with my hand, and and uh, the the you can say that uh, the waves that are created, uh, scientifically speaking, the waves that are created uh, by the swish, uh, by the waving of my hand, helps you to go uh, further away. Helps you to go further away from me. And then it says away with the pain of derision. You winged blood drop, can I not overtake you? Means you are going away with the P N B N. Means again here means a kind of slogan. Now you are uh, feeling happy. Understand? You are now singing because you have succeeded in doing uh, your job. And the reason here means now you are making fun of me because you succeeded in uh, sucking my blood. And the poet calls it winged blood drop, not mosquito. You are just now a winged blood drop. Can I not overtake you? Perhaps the poet is now chasing the mosquito here. Uh, are you too? Are you one too many for me? Winged victory. Now the poet is here to understand his here getting more and he's he's here getting angrier and angrier and says, uh, Are you too many? Are you too powerful for me? Are you too powerful for me? Are you really a goddess? Uh, are you really uh, like the goddess Nike? Am I not mosquito enough to out mosquito you? I Means now I I am a man, but I uh, know uh, sickles of a mosquito. Now I have to be a mosquito in order to kill a mosquito. That is what he says. Am I not mosquito enough to out mosquito you? I Means am I not man enough to? Uh, kill you, but here he says, "Am I not mosquito?" Now the poet is here accepting that mo mosquito, that mosquito, that the mosquito has got more sickles, that the mosquito has got uh, better talent. But the poet says, "Now I have to behave like the mosquito in order to kill a mosquito, because you have heard about that proverb, diamond cut a diamond. In order to kill a dog, you have to behave like a dog. That is what its meaning is." Cure what a big stain my sucker blood makes beside the infinitesimal paint smear of you. Cure what a dim dark smudge you have disappeared. Now in these three lines we get the evidence that the poet finally and with great difficulty succeeds uh, in killing the mosquito. And he, uh, the, the poet uh, kills the mosquito and there are uh, two marks or you can say two smudges. Uh, or two stains are formed on the wall. One stain uh, is of the dead body of the mosquito. Second stain is uh, of the blood that the mosquito had earlier sucked uh, from the poet. So two stains are formed on the wall. But the poet is here telling us that the stain that was formed with the blood uh, of the poet is bigger and the stain that was formed with the dead body of the mosquito is smaller again here the poet tries to uh, 
when the case for himself that see uh, human beings they are uh, more powerful they are bigger and uh, they are you can say here more intelligent they have the you can say higher hand or mosquitoes that is what I say am i not mosquito enough to out mosquito you cure sitting but a big city in my sucked blood my sucked blood that you sucked it, it made a big uh, stain on the wall beside the infinite smell infinite smell means here very small faint smear faint smear means faint stain faint mark of you means uh, the your dead body made a small mark and my sucked blood that you sucked it made a big uh, mark a big stain on the wall cure me strange what a dim dark smudge you have disappeared in means you were troubling me a lot you were behaving like a well detective uh, you were you had a great attitude great aura uh, but now see the end of the mosquito mosquito was nothing but a very small uh sitting a very small paint sitting palmer on the wall i think i told my i tried my level best to, to make you people understand this poem and uh, wait don't go away because now i will read other things maybe the theme paraphrase and that will help you to solidify uh whatever you learned uh from this poem structure of the poem the poem the mosquito is comprised upon 73 lines divided into 22 stanzas some lines are two worded and some even 16 worded likewise some stanzas are one liner and some eight line it has no regular pattern of lines rhythm or rhyme it has a standard diction the literary devices like pathetic fallacy metaphor simile hyperbole irony understatement etc are used in the poem the poem was written in 1920 and is included in the book birds beasts and power then you have paraphrase of the poem the poem the mosquito depicts the instinct of the mosquito and the nature of the human being it is the same instinct that causes the mosquito to harm the human being and forces the human being to do away with such harmful insects now it is in the Uh, in the instinct of the mosquito to harm human beings and at the same time it is in the instinct of the human beings to kill the harmful insects tit for tat the speaker in the poem asks a series of questions to the mosquito and thus reveals his frustration desperation amazement and obsessive fear sparked by it the speaker poet ridicules and glorifies the mosquito alternately the mosquito is described to be standing alert on his long thin legs ready to fly high and pounce on its victim it remains invisible like a phantom it is compared with a powerful goddess called nike winged victory the speaker wonders how comes such a small insect to possess so much devilry in its hardly visible tiny body the speaker grows so desperate that he begins name calling he refers to the mosquito as sorcerer devil cunning creature cheater and one that uses invisibility and anesthetic power as its weapon the speaker gets angry seeing the safety skills of the mosquito and challenges it for an unconditional open war a reader can't stop laughing seeing the speaker helpless before a tiny insect the speaker even involve invokes the providence to save him from the evil nature insect meanwhile the insect attacks the speaker sucks his blood and tries to fly away however by now the rage of the speaker has crossed all possible limits he desperately chases the insect and succeeds in crushing him against the wall next you have the theme of the poem the theme of the poem is deeply philosophical the poem highlights is the fact that in instincts are unchangeable instincts are unchangeable the female mosquito is instinctively harmful for all humans and animals as it sucks their blood it is here as it sucks their blood at the same time the human beings can't tolerate a harmful insect for long because they too are helpless in the face of their human nature 
another theme is that humans must not underestimate any hostile element a small insect like the mosquito or even an invisible virus can be deadly at times yet another theme is that human beings are undefeatable unconquerable and invincible glossary monsieur means mister shredded legs means thin legs Phantom means ghost, winged victory means a statue of Nike, heron a songbird, lurch of means to evade, trump long mouth of the mosquito, buggle it has two meanings, an instrument, noise, providence means God, and space mud in oblivion is becoming forgetful, it is here, becoming forgetful, okay, uh, then you have obscenely, indecently, gorging disgusting trespass crossing the limit infinitesimal very small then you have literary devices pathetic fallacy two examples of pathetic fallacy are here when did you start your tricks monsieur you turn your head toward your tail and smile pathetic uh, pathetic fallacy is like uh, personification but when you uh, personify living things that is called a pathetic fallacy. Uh, pathetic fallacy. For example, mosquito is a living thing, and you personify mosquito. It is called a pathetic fallacy. But if you personify means a blower, a dumbbell, a chair, they are not living things. So, if you personify them, that personification is called a personification, not pathetic fallacy. Pathetic fallacy. I just really hear this word. Pathetic fallacy. And metaphors, many metaphors have been used, phantom, winged victory, sorcerer, gowl, fiend, winged blood drop, etc. Similes you say like a heron, amazing like a slogan, these are the examples of simile from the poem, hyperbole, the mosquito is referred as winged victory, magician, rival of men, etc. Examples of hyperbole and understatement, the mosquito is also referred as nothingness, speck, frail bodied, etc. These are the examples of understatement and there are other examples of irony i forgot them to write here but i explained them while explaining the poem then you have textual question what according to the poet is the mosquito's purpose for standing high on this legs according to the poet the mosquito's purpose for standing high on this legs is to bite him and drunk his blood how does the mosquito draw the poet's attention away from itself? The mosquito draws the poet's attention away from itself by humming invisibly above the poet's head. Why does the poet call the mosquito a gowl? The poet calls the mosquito a gowl because like a gowl, it exists but is not clearly seen. Why does the mosquito suddenly lurch off into the air? The mosquito suddenly lurches off into the air to save itself from being killed. Uh, it is your trump. What is the mosquito's trump? The word trump has been formed out of the word trumpet under the rules of back formation. The poet refers to the pointed mouth of the mosquito as trump in the poem. What are the conflicting viewers? The poet has in his mind about the mosquito's buzzing. The poet hates the buzzing of the mosquito he calls it small high hateful buggle in his ear what according to the poet are the mosquitoes feeling as it is as it sucks the poet is blo uh, blood according to the poet the mosquito feels ecstatic and delighted as it sucks the poet's blood give evidence to suggest that the poet has uh, has killed the mosquito Finally, the poet succeeds in killing the mosquito as, and it is evidence is given below. What a dim, dark cement you have disobedient. And then here, what comparison is being made in the following lines? So you have to read these lines. Answer is, in the given line is the big city and formed on the wall with the poet's brother sucked earlier by the mosquito is compared with the small mark formed on the same wall with the dead body of the mosquito and yes the comparison is apt do you think the poet is it is actually an mcq object type question given on the textbook and option c is its answer that is it is uh yes i think the poem is a tirade against the annoyance caused by the mosquito to the poet and no normal human being would glorify any annoying insect so with this we came to the end of this 
lecture it was as i said already it was very difficult but i tried my level best to make it simple for you people you can uh, also uh, you can say uh, sometimes pause the video and read the things that i have written here and uh, if it is of use to you please pray for my family for the health of my mother and father and for my health god bless all of you